Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. It can be one of the easiest, most beneficial things you can do to move your life forward from things that have got you stuck, whether it's anxiety, whether it's depression, whether you want to stop smoking, all of that. I'm talking about hypnotherapy, and we're going to dispel some of those myths that people have about it. Unfortunately, it's usually like one of the last things that people choose when they want to move their life forward. I don't know why that is. Maybe it's the myths. So let's get that out of the out of the way. She is an amazing hypnotherapist at Estrella Healing Arts. Crystal Curiel joins us again here. Welcome back. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. And I'm one of those people that waited and tried other things for a long time until about about three years ago. Yeah, just about three years ago, I found hypnotherapy and it actually found me. Long story doesn't matter. But (laughs) once I got into it, did a few sessions, I noticed a difference and I still do a little touch up here and there with it. Um, Just amazing what it can do for you. And people don't realize what's actually going on. So can we do that today as if I'm calling you, I'm getting a a free consultation to see if this hypnotherapy thing is right. And I'm going to ask you those questions that I think people wonder about. I wondered about them. Yeah, I would love to do that. Okay, cool. Um, So Crystal, I, I have some challenges. One of them is I'm afraid to get on a plane. I have anxiety about getting on a plane. Can hypnotherapy help me with that? Yes, definitely. Hypnotherapy is so good with things like fears and anxieties because you can first start learning how to deal with your symptoms and deal with these stresses. And then if you still have the problem going on, you can go into, you know, your childhood, past life, different things that might be bringing up these fears and clear them out. And just by shining a light on the issue and kind of rewiring the subconscious, you can overcome these fears. I'm a little apprehensive about doing hypnotherapy because I'm afraid that I'm going to give up too much of myself. I don't want to really get too deep. And I'm afraid that, you know, you can maybe control my mind with this kind of thing. What's going on here? Okay. So when you do hypnotherapy, All hypnosis is self-hypnosis. So you're in control the entire time. I'm simply just a guide who knows the words to say and the order to put them in to put you into a relaxed state to be able to access the subconscious mind. Then it's just imagery and different techniques. And if you don't want to speak in hypnotherapy, you don't do any talking. You keep it all in your imagination. I just guide you through some guided imagery that allows your imagination to take over and start to work on these things. You can have memories come up during the hypnotherapy that you come out of and you don't have to tell me anything about it. You can just say, oh my goodness, I saw something amazing and it really helped clear it out. And I don't need to know every past trauma and detail of your life. You mentioned this thing called subconscious. What what exactly is that? Yes. So the mind has different levels. You have your conscious mind and your subconscious mind. And then what some people believe in is like your super conscious, which would be like your higher self. So when you go every day, all day long, you're usually in your conscious mind. But sometimes you slip into the subconscious. And the subconscious is the part of the brain that runs everything. And I could go on for a whole podcast about the subconscious mind and what it does and how much power we have over it if we use the tools to control it. But it runs everything. It runs your heart. It runs your digestive system. And so it's constantly working in the background. Even when you're in your conscious mind and you're thinking and you're doing these things, your subconscious mind is like running your body, healing your body and doing all these things while you're not even paying attention to it. It's also running all the background thoughts that are in your brain and all the brain neurons are firing. And so your subconscious mind is just connecting all these things while your conscious is just taking in what's around you and you're feeling in your senses. 
So it processes and then gives back into the conscious mind its translation of what you're seeing. So you're taking in like, I'm here, I see all these things in my room and your subconscious goes, oh my gosh, remember the time that uh, um, something broke and oh no. And then all of a sudden you're like weirdly triggered in your living room and you don't know why. And it's because your subconscious mind took over with this little thought that it popped up. We can be in control of it and going into hypnosis, you can retrain it because it's almost like giving yourself new neural pathways um, for the subconscious to follow, creating new quote unquote memories, you know, new, new little imagery to go back to when things are hard, you know? So you'll have, oh my goodness, I remember when Crystal had me let go of all this negativity and balloons and now I'm being triggered, but I know I have this new neural pathway, this new memory, this new activity that I can do to let it go. And the subconscious already did it. It knows how to do it again and it'll repeat it. And so you just learn these new things. So yeah, the subconscious mind is amazing. I can seriously talk for so long about it. So, okay, my fear of flying where do you, why do you think that is? You know, why do people like me, this is all hypothetical, by the way, why, why do we have those fears? Like, where could that possibly be coming from? Any examples? I have a fear of dogs too, by the way. No, I'm kidding. Oh, do you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, you know I did have a client come to me and I have Bear, my little dog who comes, he's my healing dog. He's my emotional support dog. He, you can see him on my website. Like if you come see me in person, he's there. But I did have a client who has a big fear of dogs and it was amazing. Just my dog slowly approached him and he totally, by the end of the session was like, oh my gosh, your dog is so great. You know, it was just mm. a really cool experience. But wow. anyway, so fears like flying or dogs can come from a myriad of places. Anytime the subconscious was triggered while your brain was developing with these fears, it made like a, a neural pathway that was like, I'm afraid of flying. Like maybe you saw a crash on TV as a child and that okay. might scare you. Or maybe just that you one, just that one situation, you know, let's say I was uh seven years old and I was watching TV and there was a plane crash or something like that. That one thing would take that. That's is what's going to put that fear in. It could be something so small like that, because when we're children, our minds are so squishy and it can be just one image. Wow. It can even be a nightmare. It, it's just really interesting. And that's when a lot of people come in with different belief systems. So if somebody comes to me who has a belief system um, where they believe in past lives, then we can explore that. So um, I kind of, I can work with past lives, whether you believe in it or not. I think it's great because it's the way the subconscious can work out a um, imagery for you to heal whatever's going on, whether you believe it actually happened or you believe it's just a story your subconscious wants to tell. It's just an amazing tool. Usually I do it with a more advanced client who kind of and is more comfortable with speaking because they have to talk to me through it. So, you know, it's a little more of an advanced technique. But if I was working with somebody who had like a fear of flying and we worked on the symptoms and things, but they still had that, you know, deep thing, which I had a client who um, had issue with driving, right? So we did all the symptom issues. She was feeling better, but, you know, she still didn't want to get in the car every time. Just thinking about getting in the car caused her anxiety. So then we were like, let's explore past life because she didn't have anything in her childhood that she could remember um, that that would have been big trigger, you know. So we were like, let's just try this. So we had three past life sessions and it was so amazing. By the time we were done, she was like, I... She's like, I don't know if that was real or not, but she's like, it sure feels real to me. And it feels like it's healed, you know, and then she can go throughout her life and it just no, no longer causes those triggers. Wow. Yeah. I'm amazed how it can be something so 
call it insignificant in our childhood that can, I don't want to say ruin our lives, but really minimize certain things. I mean, who doesn't want to go on vacation? Then you're afraid to get on a plane because as a kid, you saw a plane crash or something, something that yeah. uh, created that, that trigger. What if you can't hypnotize me? Does that happen? So they say there's a few things like, you know, with the myths, right? So the research shows that 25% of the population cannot be quote unquote hypnotized, which means you are not going to get on a stage and collect like a chicken. You're, you're not going to do any of the stage hypnosis. It's not going to work on you. And maybe even if you went into hypnotherapy, you wouldn't go all the way into the deeper brain waves. But the cool thing about hypnotherapy is it's effective in relaxing you to a certain level that your body can achieve. So you can achieve like the benefits of hypnotherapy. You just might not go as deep into hypnosis levels, like in, in your brain waves, which actually would be kind of nice because, you know, some people they'll follow along my words the whole time because they stay in the lighter way. Some people like to go really, really deep and they come out and they're like, I feel like I slept for 12 hours. I have no idea what you said. And I'm like, it's fine. <laughs> it all went into your subconscious, but you know, it's just different. People are going to go into different brain waves. Mm. How do I know that you're qualified to do this or any hypnotherapist? How do I know? Yes, that is a great question to ask. And I actually tell people like, do your research when you're looking for a hypnotherapist, because every state has different laws about it. And like I'm, I practice in Arizona, Arizona, there are, there's one rule about calling yourself a hypnotherapist. And that is you cannot call yourself a clinical hypnotherapist without a master's degree in psychology. So if you don't have your master's degree in psychology, you can't call yourself a clinical hypnotherapist. So I don't have that but I am a certified hypnotherapist and I went to school specifically for hypnotherapy. I went to the Southwest Institute of Healing Arts, which is an accredited school here in Arizona. Mm -hmm. They teach um, hypnotherapy, life coaching. It's all a big package called an integrative healing arts practitioner. So that's what I have my diploma in. And they, taught me advanced professional hypnotherapy where I got training in addictions because you deal so much with addiction. So I, you know, I think I took like four courses in addiction and they've taught us a lot about trauma and PTSD and how to deal with things like that. Now I, and then I began practicing and I also took entrepreneur classes, all those things to help me build my business. But you can also Go to a seminar, pay $5,000, spend a weekend, take some hypnotherapy classes, go home and start your own hypnotherapy practice. And boom, you're helping people with things like fear of planes. What if that person's fear of a plane is really, really triggering and you didn't take the courses to deal with trauma that might come up during the session? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like, you want to make sure you ask your hypnotherapist, like, what kind of training do you have? Where did you go to school? Like, make sure you understand that they actually have an education of some kind, right? Like some sort of training to be able to handle things that might come up. Because a lot of the population has PTSD and you might not know it, right? Right. And I might regress you into a past life and you might have something that triggers a flashback and I have the tools to pull you out of it and how to help you through that. Right. Whereas somebody else might have went to a seminar, learned how to hypnotize you, do a few tricks, but doesn't really have the tools to really work with the subconscious mind. So we are doing a role, role playing with Crystal here as I'm calling her to get some details on how this whole thing works. So I'm, I'm, giving my concerns about hypnotherapy and learning more about it. I want to talk about past life regression in a moment, but 
where we are here in, in my questions, hypnotist, hypnotherapist, are they the same thing? Yes, they are. But you all have to be careful when you put the therapist in there, right? You want to make sure you talk to somebody who understands the therapeutic part of it. Stage hypnotism is one thing. Hypnotherapy is another. So I, in some states, if I were to move like to, I think like Colorado's really strict rules, which is great, but I would only be able to call myself a hypnotist. And I would just say I practice guided imagery because I don't have a master's degree. And so I can't say that I do that kind of thing. So it depends on like what state you're in and what you're practicing. How do you know? And that, now we're going to, I'm curious about this uh, past life thing. How do you know that you're connecting with somebody's alleged past life? Where's the proof? Where's the validation? Past life regression. That's the thing. That's why I tell people what it's, if you believe in it, then I believe for you, it is a real experience and it's going to feel very, very real. But if you don't believe in that kind of thing, if you have a very like Christian background and maybe you don't believe in past life regression, well, we're, we can still gain from it because you can just look at it as a story your subconscious has to tell to clear out whatever is going on. Because maybe I don't, we don't want to sit here and sift through your whole entire childhood looking for every tiny trauma, right? Like some people have some really complex PTSD and that's going to take a long time. No, we want to just see what the subconscious wants to show us to process it and get it out, you know? So, and if you really do have that belief system in past life, Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that people say is, They're like, you know, I really felt connected or, you know, they'll have like imagery come up where it's like um, they'll feel connected to somebody like I know this person is in my life now. And so they'll feel a lot of connection with higher self and what's going on there. I've heard stories before of people that um, where my camera's acting weird. Stop that. I've I've seen situations where a past life regression was done and the the hypnotherapist said that you were shot in the back in another life. I'm seeing it, you're presenting evidence of it and the person that um they were working with said Oh, it's so weird that you've said that because I've always had this pain in the middle of my back and could never figure out what it is or was. So to me, there's a connection there. The hypnotherapist didn't have this information prior. Personally, I don't know if I shared with you, I have an affinity for the 1800s. I don't know what it is. I could look at pictures all day long. Like people look at videos, like look at reels on snap and TikTok and go down the rabbit hole. I could look at that's the 1800s is my rabbit hole. And (laughs) right when there was technology where you had photography and it was just a simpler way of life. It wasn't too technical, but it was just, it was just cool seeing how, Hey, look at the clothing they made. How do they even do that? It looks like it's, you know, from today, I am convinced that I was around in the 1800s. I'm not even kidding. And I didn't have a regression for this. However, I had somebody do my genealogy and she took, cause I found that I was Lithuanian. I didn't even know that. She said, yeah, you, uh, your father's father's father came from Lithuania and moved to New York city and was a tailor in the 1800s and worked his way up, worked his butt off and was able to buy his family a home in the city and did actually really well. And I'm like, you know what? I was probably there. <laughs> I don't doubt yeah. it for a second. Have you heard that from people where they present certain things and and then you go through a regression and then it seems the pieces seem to come together for that? Yeah, I like, um, I've had a very close friend who we did a past life 
who's very um just this, this very like kind, soft person who feels very connected to nature. And we did a past life and he saw that he was like a tribal guy, right? Like walking around barefoot in the grass and ended up the, the ending scene of his death was just so cool and made so much sense with his anxieties. And for him it was very real experience, you know, because he felt so connected to like, um, I always have you open the scene with looking at your feet. So um, I have you, you know, in your mind's eye, open your eyes, look down at your feet and what do you see? And it grounds you into the experience, literally grounding you into the experience. And so, and then you start creating the imagery around that. You just kind of ask the person, what are they seeing? What are you experiencing? And they kind of start telling you the story and it's just so fun. I love regression. <laughs> And huh. so his was just a really cool experience of just kind of being, you know, there was this scene of like a village being on fire and he's like helping the people in the village, you know? And so that was like all these experiences. He was just like, wow, it makes so much sense. And then after that, he had so much less anxiety just day to day because he felt like he had worked out, you know, whatever was back there, just kind of torturing him. Wow. Um, when you have them look at their feet, is that just for a regression or that's for all hypnotherapy? Um, any usually regression type therapy, I usually start with them looking down at their feet. How do you determine where, when you're going to do a regression therapy? That's a good question. Usually it's when my clients ask for it really. And after they've had, I like them to have at, at least a minimum of one session. Um, you know, if not more. So usually two or three sessions in is when I like to do a regression. So I sell packages where like for smoking cessation, I'll give you four sessions and you only have to pay for three. So I make sure that usually I think the third session in, I'll do a regression with them either past life or to like the age they started smoking and then they'll make a new choice, right? So they're creating a new memory, a new neural pathway. And so, um, Usually it's a few sessions in or specifically like if they're looking for it. I recommended hypnotherapy to my sister. I had it done. Obviously love it. Think it works right. She did well, maybe five, six sessions, I believe. And I, I recommended somebody. I didn't work with this person, but they, they had the credentials. She claims it really didn't do anything for her. And I'm going to be honest. I don't really think that she was open to it. I think that she still had blocks mm -hmm. because it should have, it should have worked. Have you encountered that um, along the way where you have to be fully open to making a change or healing, or it's really not going to work the way it should be working? Yes. So, um, you know, you, you like learn from your failures I had a session where I, you know, afterwards, I felt like I was going to cry. I was new into hypnotherapy. You know, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm really ruining my people's lives. No, um, I did the session with her and I noticed what kind of happened in the interview. So she kind of wanted to have a very spiritual type experience. She wanted to get messages or, or something like that. And I didn't follow her dance very well and more went into habit change. And I think because we had a clash in like our rapport and, you know, like goals and things like that, it just didn't got like go very smoothly. So she felt like she didn't go very deep. She felt like she couldn't really get any messages and I would say on that session, it was kind of like a little bit on both of us. Like it didn't really, like we just didn't kind of have a mesh. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's a relationship, mm -hmm. you know, that yeah. uh, you're very easy to talk to. I'm sure very easy to to work with. Sometimes it might not work for somebody else. I don't know. It's, you know, everybody, yeah. everybody's different, but you have to be open to it. You can't be yeah. a spouse talking to, you know, their, their wife or husband saying, I need you to stop smoking. We need you yes. to stop. I'm I'm here. I just made the appointment with Crystal and and we're going to get this done. They don't want to make that change. It's not it's not going to happen. 
Um, make the sure. change. It works. It's fantastic. It uh, is. I know. Yeah. And I tell people that because I'll get a lot of calls, you know, oh, my my son's into drugs and I need him to stop. And I'm like, does he believe in hypnotherapy? Like, does he want to get it? Is he open to it? Because if you're not open to it, you're not going to want to go as deep yeah. into relaxation. It's just, you know, That's it's. It. Just like you're going to lay there and then you're going to, you know, kind of listen. So you really have to be like open to the experience and ready and willing to, to let the changes happen. How do we connect with you? I am online. So you can find me on my website, which is estreahealingarts.com. Oh my goodness. Every time I try to spell it out, I'm like, okay. E S T R E L L A healing h-e-a-l-i-n-g arts a-r-t-s dot com awesome australia healing arts and you can also can do i give out my should i give out my phone number it's up to you sure all right sure okay so you can also reach me by phone or text at 480-459-9152 Awesome talking with you. I'm going to get certified. I'm going to hypnotize you so you will never forget the spelling of that website. That's what I'm oh, working on. My job, that's what I'm working on. It's all good. Uh, Crystal, great, great talking with you. Thanks for the insight and uh, looking forward next time we catch up. Awesome. Thank you so much, Steve. Thank you. We'll be right back. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go, and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.